I'm going to investigate the standard RLC electrical circuit with alternating current and voltage. I hope to be able to convince you why it is a useful thing to do to introduce complex versions of the current and the voltage. These complex versions will in turn very naturally lead us to define something called the complex impedance. The complex impedance codes into its structure via the rules of complex numbers the relationship between the current and the voltage and in particular by means of an argand diagram in the complex plane it will allow us to picture the phase difference between the current and the voltage that is it will allow us to picture whether the current leads or lags the voltage and by how much. I'm going to work very slowly and carefully to make all of this clear so for that reason I'm splitting the screencast into three parts. In part one we'll work without any complex quantities. We will end up with a relationship between voltage and current but we'll see that it's a rather cumbersome relationship and it's not easy to picture the phase difference from what we get at the end of this screencast. In part two we'll move on to complex quantities. Here we'll see everything falling out in a much nicer way and we'll be able to picture the phase difference very clearly. In part 3 we'll look at a specific example where we put in some numbers for the quantities and work out the numerical value of the complex impedance. Let's start by looking at the circuit. There's an AC voltage source which we'll take to be sinusoidal. It causes a current in the circuit current is usually designated I and it depends on time T. It's measured in amps. The circuit contains in series three different components. A resistor R measured in ohms, an inductance L measured in henrys and a capacitance C measured in farads. We've already said that the voltage is sinusoidal so let's start by writing down a sinusoidal form for the current. I of t is I0 sine omega t. I0 is called the amplitude. It's the maximum value ever taken by the current during the course of the oscillation. The little symbol that looks like a W is actually a Greek letter omega. It's a standard symbol that is used for angular frequency. So let's now label those two quantities. As is always the case with sine and cosine terms, from the angular frequency we can write down the period. The period is a time, so I'll call it capital T. It's just 2 pi over omega. Furthermore, the frequency is the reciprocal of the period, 1 over T. So it can be written as omega over 2 pi. We will need to look back at those quantities later on. For the moment, let's return to the circuit. In the 19th century, people did extensive experiments with circuits containing components of resistance, inductance and capacitance. Using those experiments over a long period of time, they determined that there were relationships between the voltage and the current at each end of the component. So, for example, we could take the resistor and measure the voltage at each end, we find that the voltage is different. We call that the voltage drop or the voltage change across the resistor. By experimenting enough, people found that there was a linear relationship between the voltage in the resistor, across the resistor that is, and the current in the resistor. In fact, they found V was proportional to I with a proportionality constant that they called R. So let's now start to write down these relationships. The voltage across the resistor, V, but because it's a resistor and there are other components in the circuit, let's label it VR. It was proportional to, with a proportionality constant R, the current I of T. We could replace the current with the expression at the top of this page at the moment which is I0 sine omega t. 
for the inductance it was a little bit different. There was still a voltage drop across the inductance, but this time they found that it was proportional to, and we'll use a proportionality constant L, and it was not the current but the rate of change of the current that appears here. We can differentiate sine and it'll give us cos and since it's sine omega t the omega will come out the front so we'll end up with L omega I0 cos omega t. In the case of the capacitor there was a similar relationship but this time it was the other way round. People found that I across the capacitor was proportional to a constant C which is the capacitance and the rate of change of the voltage across the two sides of the capacitor. This relationship presents us with a minor obstacle. We need to get V in terms of I. We could certainly divide by C to get dVc by dt is 1 over Ci and that in turn allows us to write dVc by dt is I0 over C sine omega t and now we need to anti-differentiate in other words Vc is the integral of I0 over C sine omega t dt and that's I0 over C, they're just constants sine anti-differentiates to give a negative cos and also on anti-differentiating we have to divide by the omega we could put plus a constant there but we choose the constant to be zero that is, we're assuming that the voltage is oscillating about a zero point. I'm going to ring the three voltage quantities in red for when we need to look back at them. Now, what about the whole circuit with all three components? The components are in series, so the voltage drop across them is simply the sum of the three voltage quantities. That is, the total voltage is VR plus VL plus VC. VR, there it is, RI0 sine omega t. I0 is going to be a factor everywhere, so let's take it outside. So we have an R sine omega t. That's for the resistance part. Now the VL and the VC, there's VL and the VC, notice they both have cosines. So we could bracket those together. One has L omega times cos and the other has minus 1 over omega C. and it's cos omega t and the I0 is still out the front. We've got ourselves a relationship between voltage and current but it's a rather cumbersome looking relationship and notice that while the current had only a sign in it back here the voltage has a mixture of both sign and cos. Now we do have formulae for combining signs and cosses into a single sign or a single cos. So we could apply one of those formulae and write this as I0 times sine of omega t plus phi, the phase angle. But doing that's a little bit complicated and messy. It's much easier to use complex quantities. In that case, those quantities code in the structure of the trigonometric functions and the relationships we want fall out in a much more natural way. I'm going to stop here and look at the complex case in part two.